Shalom. I'm Eddie Chumney, Fibre Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you to this week's Focus Israel Report. In this week's report, we're going to be sharing with you regarding Benjamin Netanyahu's task to form a new government coalition and the current situation with the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. And it is as follows. Given the results of the March 17th elections, Israel President Reuven Rivlin gave the task to incumbent Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to form the next Israeli government. Rivlin said to Netanyahu, you are given the responsibility of forming a government as stable and as wide as possible and soon. The incoming government and the new Knesset are faced with three critical tasks, he said. The first is reinforcing the ties between Israel and the United States, who is our biggest and most important ally. The second is to restore stability to the political system and restoring the public's trust in that system, as Israel must not have another round of elections in two years. And the third is healing the painful wounds and rifts opened in recent years which have grown during this recent election campaign, Rivlin said. Rivlin added, To the citizens of Israel, we've gone through a difficult election campaign. Things were said on all sides that should have not been said, not in a Jewish state and not in a democratic state. The heat of the political rhetoric doesn't help anyone. The fire is not just hot, it could burn. In reply, Netanyahu said, I accept the task that you've given me of forming the next government. With a feeling of great responsibility, Netanyahu told told the president. Netanyahu said he viewed himself as the prime minister of each and every one of you, those who elected me and those who did not. I will act to mend the rifts which have opened up between the different segments of society during the election. Netanyahu urged Israeli citizens to put the elections behind them and focus on what unites them. I must continue on this path in the next government that is formed. Being over a Jewish and democratic country that gives full equal rights to all of its citizens regardless of religion race, or gender. So it has always been, and so it will continue to be, he said. Netanyahu said that he wants to have good relations with the United States. However, he said that he would continue to try to prevent a bad nuclear deal from being reached between the six major world powers, that is the United States, England, France, Russia, and China, along with Germany and Iran. Real peace can be achieved only if Israel remains strong and stable, Netanyahu said. After being given the responsibility to form his new government coalition, Netanyahu began coalition talks with the five parties most likely to be in his coalition, and they are Jewish Home, Kulanu, Israel Batenu, Shahs, and United Torah Judaism. If all agree to be in the government, it would give Netanyahu a coalition of 67 Knesset members. A majority of 61 Knesset members are needed in order to form a government. Initially, Netanyahu will have until May the 7th to form his next government coalition. Zionist Union Party leader Isaac Herzog, whose political party came in second place behind Netanyahu's Likud political party, ruled out the possibility of forming a unity government with Benjamin Netanyahu, echoing Netanyahu's words by saying the difference between the two political parties were too profound for them to work together. Netanyahu said that there's a huge chasm between us. He said during the elections that we are anti-Zionists, and he said during the elections that I will basically sell the country to the Arabs, Herzog said. However, the Zionist Union leader also spoke of deepening an alliance with Arab Knesset members, insisting he would try to bring them into the mainstream of Israeli politics. Regarding the peace process, after months of freezing tax revenue transfers as punishment for the Palestinian Authority's application to join the Rome Statute, which would allow them to become a member of the International Criminal Court, Israel said that it would release the money to the Palestinian Authority. In January, Israel froze the transfer of some 500 million shekels in tax collections to protest the Palestinians' application for membership in the International Criminal Court on behalf of the state of Palestine. The tax money is used to pay public sector salaries and is critical to running the Palestinian Authority. The decision was made by Israel to help rebuild bridges with the United States due to U.S. criticism of Benjamin Netanyahu when during the Israeli election season, Netanyahu said that there would not be a Palestinian state during his term as Prime Minister. U.S. President Barack Obama gave a cold reception to Benjamin Netanyahu's re-election as Prime Minister of Israel on March the 17th. 
From this time, U.S.-Israel relations have been tense, as the Obama administration has made many harsh statements toward Israel in regarding the peace process. According to a senior Israeli official, the multiple condemnations are a form of revenge from the Obama administration against Netanyahu, who says that the U.S. is doing these things for three primary reasons. Number one, to take revenge for Netanyahu speaking before the U.S. Congress regarding the Iranian situation recently. 2. Frustration. It's no secret that the Obama administration was involved in an attempt to bring down Netanyahu, and given that he's been re-elected, the U.S. effort has failed. Number 3. The U.S. government's attempt to shift the focus from them and their negotiations with Iran to the Palestinian issue. The senior official heavily criticized the Obama administration's handling of Israel and the issue of peace talks, asking why the issue of settlements in the West Bank are suddenly the most important policy issue to the United States. Look what Israel has done so far with the construction of the settlements, the official said. Israel took upon itself all the restrictions from the former Israel Prime Minister Ariel Sharon and former U.S. President George Bush era, which allows Israel to continue building Jewish homes for natural growth, but not to establish new settlements. Recently, U.S. Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough said, an Israeli occupation that has lasted for almost 50 years must end. Furthermore, Obama said that he's not made any decision regarding if the United States would no longer use its veto at the UN Security Council to prevent the establishment and recognition of a Palestinian state until after Netanyahu forms his new government. Obama said, we are going to do that evaluation. We're going to partly wait for an actual Israeli government to form. After the March 17th Israeli elections, Netanyahu clarified his views on a Palestinian state saying the U.S media, I don't want a one-state solution. I want a sustainable, peaceful two-state solution, while stressing the grave dangers posed to Israel and the region from radical Islam and the PLO's refusal to negotiate in good faith a two-state solution. However, the Obama administration rejected Netanyahu's clarification. Obama said the U.S. could no longer base its peace policy on something everyone knows is not going to happen. There still does not appear to be a prospect of a meaningful framework established that would lead to a Palestinian state, even if there were a whole range of conditions and security requirements that might be phased in over a long period of time, which was always the presumption for any peace agreement. Obama continued, The issue has never been, do you create a Palestinian state overnight? The issue is, do you create a process and a framework that gives the Palestinians hope? The possibility that down the road they have a secure state of their own, standing side by side with the secure and fully recognized Jewish state of Israel, he said. Obama added, It's not just my estimation, but it's hard to envision how this can happen based upon Netanyahu's recent statements. Netanyahu is representing his country's interests the way he thinks that he needs to do, and I'm doing the same. So the differences between us can't be reduced to a matter of somehow saying, let's all hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Meanwhile, the United Nations Middle East envoy Robert Siri challenged the United Nations Security Council to present a framework for peace between Israel and the Palestinians, saying that this may be the only way to preserve the goal of a two-state solution, while being critical of Jews who live in the West Bank and East Jerusalem by saying that Jews living in these areas may kill the very possibility of reaching a peace agreement with the Palestinians based upon the principle of two states for two peoples. In addition, Siri said that if the world believes in a two-state solution and Israel and the Palestinians are unable to agree on a meaningful framework to resume peace negotiations, the international community should seriously consider preserving such a framework for negotiations, including parameters to achieve this. Siri added, it remains the primary responsibility of the UN Security Council to play its role in developing a new peace architecture for resolving the conflict at long last, he said. UN Security Council Resolution 242, embodying the key principle of land for peace, is nearly 50 years old. UN Security Council 242, adopted shortly after the Six-Day War in 1967, has long been the cornerstone of diplomatic efforts, calling for negotiations between the sides based upon the principle of land for peace and secure and recognized borders 
for Israel. Siri noted that American attempts to solve the conflict during his seven-year tenure have not been met with success and that the Middle East Quartet, consisting of the United States, the United Nations, the European Union, and Russia, whose job is to facilitate and oversee peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians, have largely failed to live up to their expectations. The Palestinian ambassador to the United Nations, Riyad Mansour, said that he agrees with Syria's comments, saying, We hope that the UN Security Council will take that responsibility very seriously. Mansour said that he wants to see a resolution with a time frame for ending the Israeli occupation and with terms of reference for the peace process. The last round of peace talks pressed on Israel by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry were torpedoed by the Palestinians last April when it unilaterally joined international treaties in breach of the 1993 Oslo Accords and signed a unity deal with the Hamas terrorist organization. In response to Syria's comments, Israel Ambassador to the UN Ron Prozer said that not only was the international community not demanding anything of the Palestinians, but was assisting their efforts to destroy any chance for progress toward a peace agreement. Prozer added that the international community should be paying attention to the Palestinian Authority actions that torpedoed the diplomatic process. These actions, he said, included walking away from negotiations in favor of unilateral activity against Israel in the international arena, giving prizes to terrorists, and forming a unity government with Hamas who calls for Israel's destruction. Israel's position has long been that as long as the Palestinians believe the world will set the parameters for a peace agreement, thereby imposing a solution, the Palestinians will not feel any need to compromise with Israel around the negotiating table. Anyone who believes that there is a substitute for direct negotiations is fooling themselves, said an Israeli government official. Peace will not be advanced by passing resolutions at the United Nations, but by Israelis and Palestinians seriously discussing the issues that separate them. Everything else is just empty talk. The official said that there could be no peace without the Palestinians recognizing the legitimacy of a Jewish state and without them finally taking Israel's legitimate security concerns seriously. Meanwhile, a European diplomat said that the European Union and Israel are on a collision course. If Netanyahu forms a center-right government and continues to build Jewish homes in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, a European report outlines 40 possible decisions that the European Union could take to pressure Israel into returning to negotiations. If these things happen, the European diplomat indicated that the items contained in the report could begin to get implemented. However, EU member states have not yet approved the recommendations. European Policy Center analyst Andrea Frontini said that European Union diplomacy will likely remain in a listening mode, waiting for Netanyahu to form his new government coalition and indicate his political and diplomatic strategy regarding the peace process. She added, Israel will also have to show through their actions that they're committed to a two-state solution. In any event, France plans to start discussions with its UN Security Council partners in the coming weeks on a UN Security Council resolution to lay out the parameters for ending the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius said, We have said that these parameters have to be defined and recognized by the UN Security Council and that obviously Israel and the Palestinians have to discuss these things themselves. But at the same time, these discussions will be accompanied by an international effort to help the process. As Fabius said that there is no other solution to consider. Well, that's going to conclude this week's report where we shared with you regarding Benjamin Netanyahu beginning the process to form his new government coalition in the current situation with the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. Until we do it again, Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen.